We are officially beginning the review for the AP Calculus College Board exam. Exciting. And so what you'll see here is I've taken a snippet from the College Board description and the first topic we're going to look at is limits. So first of all, you need to have just an intuitive understanding of what a limit is. You have to be able to calculate a limit from an algebraic perspective and then also be able to estimate limits from a graphical perspective. So you can see the graphical, numerical, algebraic, and then verbal idea. Okay, so looking at our first definition, what exactly is a limit? Well, you know a limit to be this algebraic notation, which says that a function has a limit as x approaches c, if and only if the right-hand limit and the left-hand limits are equal. So you remember us talking about that. As I approach a constant from the right, the limit must equal as I approach that same constant from the left. If that is true, I therefore have a limit. So looking at a graphical perspective, first of all. Now remember, when we talk about limits, informally, it's basically what is happening to the y value as x gets closer to a certain number. What is y approaching? Key phrase there, approaching. Okay, either from the left or the right. Now, if the value is not equal from the left and the right, the limit does not exist. So, first of all, as I approach 1 from the left, so coming from the left, what is the y value? We can see the y value is 1. As I approach 1 from the right, what is the y value? The y value is 2. So what is the limit as I approach 1 from the left and the right? Well, you notice they're different values. So therefore, the limit does not exist. Now, this question, if you recall, is asking a different question. What is the y value when x equals 1? So what is the value of the function when x is 1? Well, the value would be 2, since that is a closed point at y equals 2. Here's another graphical look at a limit. So as you approach 1 from the left, what is the y value? We can see that to be negative 1. As I approach 1 from the right, what is the y value? That is 1. So then we can make the conclusion then, therefore, the limit does not exist since the values are not equal from the right and the left. And then check this out, too. What is the value at 1? Well, here you see the value of when x is 1 is 0, which is neither the limits from the left or the right. Okay? So that's the graphical approach. Now, what about algebraically? What if I'm given a function and I need to algebraically calculate the limit? So you'll probably remember this from early in the year. First thing you do is you substitute the value, the constant, into the function. And if you get a value, there's your limit. Now, if that doesn't work, then try factoring. And then you can reduce. And possibly then you might know. You also might want to attempt to rationalize the function. Sometimes that will also give me an avenue to be able to find the limit. Now, if that doesn't work either, then it's most probable then either you have a vertical asymptote and either the limit is approaching infinity as you approach the constant or your, your limit is approaching negative infinity as you approach the constant or it does not exist. Okay? So, if steps one and two don't work, then you're going to have a zero in denominator which will result in a vertical asymptote. Okay? Now, if you remember, how do I decide if it's going to be a positive infinity or negative infinity. Well, you select a number close to the constant on the right side and on the left side. And you find its sign. If they both are positive, then it's going to be a affinity. If their signs are both negative, then it's negative infinity. If their signs are opposite, then it does not exist. Is this all coming back to you now? I hope so. Okay, let's look at a problem. Oh, wait, did I skip? Oh, no, here we go. So how are limits and vertical asymptotes related? Well, there's a definite relationship. So a vertical asymptote will exist if for the limit, as x approaches c of a function f of x, if this limit will produce a zero in the denominator. Okay? That cannot be reduced. 
Now, generally, remember, it's going to be some constant over zero. That is where you have a vertical asymptote. Now, if you end up with, so this is vertical asymptote. But do you remember also when we talked about what if you have zero over zero? Well, that's the indeterminate form. So if you end up with zero over zero, this is indeterminate. So basically, that usually tells me I need to do some more research on this function because something might be hiding there, OK? But this definitely is vertical asymptote. Let's do a couple of examples. So let's say we're given the function of the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x plus 5 over x minus 2. Well, we know if we try to 1 substitute, we would get 2 times 2 plus 5 over 2 minus 2. You can see there, 4 plus 5, we get 9 over 0. OK, so now we'll try to factor or rationalize. Well, nothing can be done in that area. So then I'm kind of thinking I've got a vertical asymptote here. And it is a constant over 0. So if I select a number to the left and to the right of 2, so let's say I select x is equal to 1. And if I substitute that in, then x is equal to 1, I get a positive in the numerator, a negative in the denominator. And if I substitute 2.5, then I would have a positive and a positive. So then our limit then will be, um, as x approaches 2, is going to be um, does not exist because it's a positive and a negative. They're, both signs are not both the same. I'm going to pause this video a minute. Huh, which one's okay, I'm back. You probably didn't even know I was gone. So we left off with the limit does not exist at this problem because from the left and the right, they're approaching different values. Now, in this function, negative 2, if I were to substitute negative 2 into the original equation, we can see, or see here in the denominator negative 2 squared is 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0, so we'd end up with the 0 in the denominator. But remember our second step, can you factor? And yes, we can on this. So it would be x um, minus 4, x plus 2, all over x plus 2, x minus 2. And we can see the binomials reduce. So now I can substitute negative 2 in, and negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6, and then negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So the limit then would be 3 halves as I approach negative 2. Okay, so that is the algebraic approach for finding a limit. And again, we would continue this process here. Oh, no, 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 no. Step back. Actually, this is a different problem now. Notice all of the limits I've done thus far have been as x approaches a constant. Now I'm looking at what happens as x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity. In other words, the end behavior of the graph. So if you recall, when you're looking at end behavior, the first thing you want to do is look at the value, the degree, of the numerator and denominator. So if the highest power of x appears in the denominator, then you notice that the denominator is getting larger at a quicker amount. So, you know, like if you have 1 over 1,000, 1 over a million, 1 over a trillion, you're actually approaching 0. Now, then you look at the degrees of the numerator and denominator, and if the numerator is higher, then you're, it's approaching positive or negative affinity. And last of all, if the denominators have the same degree, you will simplify the coefficient of the numerator over the denominator. Now I'm going to have to pause again. Okay, so let's look at these two examples that we have here. So notice we want to find out what is happening to the graph as x approaches infinity, the long-term end behavior. So I look at the variables with the highest degree in the numerator and denominator. So I can see the numerator has the greatest degree. So therefore, since the numerator is the greatest degree, I would be approaching positive infinity or negative infinity. Now we know if we plugged in, substituted a very large number, it would result in a positive value. So we're approaching positive infinity. Now looking at this example, we have to do a little simplification because it might not be clear to you what the degree is. So we know that a square root is the one-half power, okay? And then we know that, well, one-half of two is one. So actually, we have the same degree in both the numerator and the denominator. So then we look at the coefficients. And so this limit then would be one-half, okay? Now, verify, though, approaching infinity, would that be a positive one-half or a negative one-half? Well, since it's one-half squared to the square root, that has to be positive in the numerator, and then the denominator would also be positive. Okay, great. 
Now, just as a summary, we have we've covered limits as the AP board describes, and then the, the AP board also requires that you do have an understanding of asymptotes and unbounded behavior. So we just reviewed understanding horizontal and vertical asymptotes, and you can describe the asymptotes in terms of the limits involving infinity, okay? And then we can compare the relative magnitude, the size, the largeness of the functions and their rates of change. Good, now make sure you answer the Google form and that you've taken notes on all of this video. See you guys after spring break. Enjoy yourself.